about this. Uh, I'm not. This was my How favorite. could I possibly memorize a script for a bunch of questions well, that certainly. I didn't know were going to be asked? Right. However, uh, however, uh, much the questions were about. about, about, about now, wait a minute. Let me tell you something that you that you yeah. have done and repeatedly in your class. First mm -hmm. of all, there hasn't been any class that's only five minutes long. And we've certainly been on the air here longer than five minutes. Yeah. But many of you. Uh, have insisted on getting onto the subject that emotionally involves you, which is Vietnam, which is not really the province of a governor. And there has been a strange lack of wanting to get into a detail or in depth about what have I done in California. Now, what we should do in Vietnam. No, now wait, wait just a minute. Here again. I do not deliberately or willingly go out and volunteer uh, stands on Vietnam. And this is one of the things that you should learn, and Derek, you ought to learn this most of all if you're going to pursue journalism. There's a thing that uh, I've learned, and now I guard myself a little better. There's no way to tell the public when they read the headline or the lead of the story uh, how the subject came up. You go out in a press conference. You're going to make a speech. You talk entirely on California and what you've done in the state government. But the member of the press comes up and he wants to talk to you about Vietnam. And he asks you a question. And you say to him, as I've said on any number of occasions, well, look, uh, this isn't really a state problem and it isn't the governor's problem. You're asking me as an individual, I'll tell you just as a citizen, what I feel about Vietnam. But the headline comes out with nothing about what you said in the speech. The headline comes out, Reagan says, win in Vietnam. Right. Now, the average person, even your own people, read this and they say, What's he doing going out making statements about Vietnam? You didn't. You answered a question. Why doesn't the reporter honestly say uh, the governor was here to speak about the problems of California and was asked and did say that as a citizen his opinion was? They don't say that. Well, it's governor, easier to do it the other is, way. Why is it that, that each time you've spoken about civil rights, you've talked about the integration of baseball, about Willie Mays and Jackie Robinson? It, it's become repetition, repetitious, and it seems to me a sad concept of civil rights if it extends to the integration of baseball. I mean, the real problems are questions of housing, uh, questions of today. the ghetto. And right, let me ask you something. What is the democratic machine <coughs> in Chicago? We don't like Daly. Wait, wait. Daly's what have they done compared to what we're doing in California? And why don't you get down to some of the specifics? And in some classes they have, and I've answered. California is the only state I know in the Union that has mobilized the entire independent sector and is actually with a program in the minority pockets aimed particularly at Negroes as well as some other minorities, but particularly there, to solve the employment problem by way of good productive jobs involving job training on a statewide basis and is putting thousands and thousands of them into fine productive jobs. Why, doesn't, why don't you ask that when, when the president called a conference in Virginia some time ago on problems of this kind, the state of California, the governor of California, each governor was supposed to be repre sent a representative, his personal representative. I was the only one of the 50 governors who sent a Negro because he is my personal representative. He is on my staff. Why don't you ask that the first time in the history of the state of California that a man that was not an officer, an enlisted man, and a man that is a Negro is the director in charge of all veterans affairs for the state of California. Right. Now, and, and we have heard you. I, I remember we heard you yesterday tell us about the, some of the fine appointments you've made of uh, Negro officials in your administration. But we also asked you about, for example, the problem of wants. And you told us about your business friend, friend, Mr. Chad McClellan, who had gotten jobs for a number of Negroes, and we found this very admirable. But you also pointed out that then a high percentage of these Negroes moved out of wants. And a young man asked you then, what about the remaining four, the people in the inner ghetto, the people in Watts who aren't baseball players, who aren't appointed to your administration? What to do about them? And, and we didn't have an answer. Oh, yes, you did. I told you that don't think that because I described the one program, that now the social problem of those who are not that easily employable or trainable, that we're neglecting it, that all the other programs I told you are in effect and are in working, including some additional ones, such as Operation Bootstrap, and others that are aimed at finding the specific reasons for the unemployment and the problems, and we are working on them. You might have been interested to know that uh, I asked for and have legislation that has been passed that in what is an even greater minority in California, and, an, and a minority that has a lower level of education, 
a higher rate of dropout, and a lower level of employment than the Negro is the American and Mexican descent. And one of the great reasons that we've discovered for this problem in, in education, our children come to school uh, who've heard nothing but Spanish in their homes. And we've passed legislation now that we're going to put dual language teachers in those schools so that a teacher will be able to find out in the child's home language whether his inability to get a subject or get an answer is because of lack of language knowledge and thus can get them on. This is, we have a number of things of this kind, but with regard to whether we can handle the job, I would think that uh, I voluntarily stated, because I didn't think anyone was going to ask me, and they didn't, about some of the things that have led to our ability to reduce a budget by $127 million well, to reduce the... With you. I mean, I think you'll find that the students here would be described as, as liberal or liberal Democrats are in many ways, sure or many not. of the same, same attitudes with you are, you know, are very dissatisfied with the so-called, you know, liberalism of a person like Lyndon Johnson or the, you know, the, the machine democratic politics. But the problem comes down to, I mean, and we share many of the same anxieties and frustrations even about the war, but the problem comes down to solutions and ways to do it. And it seems to us, at least, that yours is, a, in a sense, a retrogressive well, way of dealing with it. As a governor of California, I not only didn't declare the war, I can't end the no, war. No, but not even the war, war, but all, but I mean, the whole range of problems. We have many similar, you know, attitudes. And you, you know, gave what I thought was a, a very good critique of the, the failure of public housing to meet the problems of the ghetto. But your solution seemed to me to go in, in the wrong direction. It was to, to go back again to rely on private housing. No, there wouldn't be a I need. I said that I favored and believed that because there seems to be a, a lack of motivation uh, in, the, in the area of public housing, that the individual in there uh, lacks all the motivation that makes any other human being take care of the place where he lives, uh, have some concern about the neighborhood and so forth, and crime has increased and all these things. I suggest that why don't we start exploring and experimenting to find out why we lack this, and I made the proposal, why don't we experiment with uh, injecting pride of ownership and try a public housing project, at least try one, in which we give the individual the actual ownership does of this. Uh, does this correlate to the, the Percy plan that he, uh, he's announced? In the I, I, I haven't too. read his in detail, but it, there might be some similarities. But I, I would like to ask one small question about Vietnam, and I will not ask any more about it. Simply, I was talking to a kid who used to live across the street from you, and he described how uh, you once brought a copy of Conscience of a Conservative over to his father, who's rather liberal, to read. And I wonder if we, in turn, would send you just one or two books on Vietnam, would you at least try 20 or 30 pages of the books? Well, listen, uh, uh, you underestimate me. Uh, I tried to tell you one day, I am only recently a Republican. I was a New Deal Democrat. Sure. I was the most bleeding heart of liberals you ever saw. I think I have probably as good an understanding as anyone does of the thought processes of the liberal. I was there. I sat where you now sit. And, it's, uh, it's changed. Uh, and I do Politics. read both sides. As a matter of fact, I, I have an inquiring mind. I may not have managed to catch up uh, with as many of the most recent things, but then I would have to tell you, and I could ask Nancy to verify it for me, when you get to be governor, one of the things that bothers you is that you find yourself uh, at night and, uh, uh, Derek, this is with one of those corrections of one of your statements. <laughs> you find yourself with a full briefcase of memorandums and reports that must be digested uh, because the next day decisions are going to well, have to be you made be, on them. If I sent these, I mean, you wouldn't take it, and you'd take it nicely, I mean, and well, not return them or anything. Of course anything. not. I'd, well, I'd, I'd be very happy to get them and hope that, uh, that uh, uh, usually I snatch uh, chapters here and there of something I'm trying to read other than these things. That I always felt I knew what his response was going to be. It was going to be an okay type response.